Can you use a yo-yo in space? Yeah, kinda. Okay, I'll go into more details in a second, but first, hi, how are you? Let's talk about yo-yos for a second. Here's a super quick summary of the humble yo-yo. Yo-yos can be different in shape, types of axle, and response. There are three shapes the yo-yo basically comes in. It comes in either butterfly, classic, or modified. The butterfly shape can have a wider gap than what you typically see in a yo-yo like this one, and they're usually rounded or in a V shape. The butterfly shape works best to do string tricks with. Those are when you land the yo-yo onto the string. These aren't your grandma's yo-yos. You can do a lot more tricks with them than what you could in days of past. Days of past? In past days, days that have passed. The classic shape is what you'd expect in a yo-yo. These are good for big loopy tricks, but they're not really very good for string tricks because it's hard to land the yo-yo onto the string because they have a narrower gap. The modified shape has a gap, but it's not quite as narrow as the classic shape and it's not quite as wide as the butterfly shape. If you see people using two yo-yos at the same time, there's a good chance that this is what they're using. These could be your grandma's yo-yos. I don't know your grandma. She could be super into modified yo-yos. Hard to yo-yo while sitting down. The axle is the middle bit that joins the two halves of a yo-yo. In the bygone days of the original yo-yo, the string would hold the axle freely and the axle would generally be fixed. These days what you see is a, the ability to screw one of the halves off like that. I should get that. That is a doorbell. These days the axles have either transaxle sleeves or ball bearings that help the yo-yo spin longer. The final differentiator is response. Now a yo-yo can either be responsive or unresponsive. A responsive yo-yo pretty much comes back if it's given a light tug. An unresponsive yo-yo requires a trick called a bind for it to come back. Making a yo-yo spin for a bit when it's down is called sleeping. This is pretty much the first trick anyone learns. In a responsive yo-yo, you'd throw the yo-yo and pull back a little and it would come right back up. The friction required to pull the yo-yo back up comes from the opposing forces of gravity and your meaty meaty fingers pulling on the yo-yo. In outer space, gravity isn't exactly something I would rely on. One way to get the yo-yo back up is to replace gravity with a throw like astronaut Sergei Treshev did here. This doesn't allow the yo-yo to sleep. The force from your throw and the tension of the string are enough to pull the yo-yo back up as soon as it gets as far away as it gets. So yeah, you can kind of use a yo-yo, I guess? Wrong. Sergei's a noob. A real yo-yo master would never give up at this point. You wouldn't let a lack of gravity stop you from becoming the yo-yo master you were destined to be. Sergei is a very cool cosmonaut and he is very skilled at what he does. I apologize to his friends and family. You just need another force to oppose the tension in the string. And Jedi tricks are out apparently because they're fictional or whatever. There's a beginner's trick called an around the world. Now what that trick allows you to do is to spin the yo-yo around in a full circle while it is sleeping. And this will make it so that a light tug could make the yo-yo come right back into your hands. Now this is where a yo-yo master emerged. A man only accompanied by the light scent of copper and the faint hum of a spinning hunk of metal. That's right, it's NASA astronaut Don Pettit. Armed with a non-responsive yo-yo, he just introduced a whole new level. The first thing he does is introduce a trick called Orbit the Earth, which is a lot like around the world, but in space, I guess. Making up tricks like it's nothing. Can we do these tricks? No, because he's doing them in zero Gs. That's so few Gs. That's like one whole G less than I have. I mean, some of this is just cheating, right? Don goes on to talk about how knowing the physics behind a yo-yo can help you get guys, gals, and jobs. And if the guys and gals aren't into yo-yos or physics, then they're the wrong kind of guys and gals anyway. And I kind of like that. That's a very affirming thing. Like what you like, man. Do you, people. And I think generally that, that kind of love for anything is super infectious. You get all that energy from a person who's super engaged with what they're talking about. And that may be the biggest lesson that 
astronaut Don Pettit has taught us. I mean, besides the yo-yo tricks, you know, like, those are still pretty much top tier. Also, he did some space stuff that wasn't yo-yo related. I'm spending more time training to fly the robotic arm so I can snag this little spacecraft coming up here in a week or so called drag. And I haven't been spending as much time as I should working on my yo-yo training. So I've been ignoring my yo-yo training. So it, it may take a couple of times to get this trick correct. So I'm trying out this new format where I do a time lapse and then just talk about what I'm interested in. Mm. Let me know if you're into this format. I would appreciate the feedback. Let me know in the comments. Okay, thanks, bye.